Hi guys, so I have something a little different here. It's a gaming laptop. I mostly focus on more budget orientated things and the occasional premium gaming laptop, but this one sells for $299 and it has a dedicated GPU and the CPU is a quad core. Now it's nothing amazing spec wise as you would expect for that price range of course. So it has a Celeron J3455. I have never reviewed this Apollo Lake chipset. Most commonly I'm looking at the N. 3450, which is right here in the Techlast F7. Now, this CPU is very similar to that one. It's slightly higher clocked. It has a TDP of 10 watts instead of the 6, I think it is, on the N3450. So it offers just a slight increase there in performance. I think it's something around 20% or 50% more. It's not amazing. But what's interesting is it's paired up with the six gigabytes of RAM that you typically see now on those budget laptops, but it's got a dedicated GPU, an NVIDIA 920M. So I picked this one up here from geekbind.com and they threw in some free Valentine's Day gift and actually arrived on Valentine's Day. So how's that for luck? And what it was is this funny little thing here, I don't know what it is, Happy Monkey, but I'll give that to my four-year-old daughter anyway, she'll love to play with that. So as you can see, the box is rather basic here and it's not offering a lot of protection. So hopefully it's gonna be okay. I can see it hasn't taken any knocks or anything. And just to point out that on this side, I won't show it, we've got a Windows 10 home key. Now it could be the Chinese home key, but it should allow us to do a clean install as well with that CD key, which is good. So in the top of the box here, we've got the power supply and cables I can see. Okay, geekbind.com has included an adapter and there is the cable. So now this power cable actually looks like the Australian New Zealand one, so that three prong, prong style one. And the power supply, which isn't that big. I mean, we're only powering a Apollo Lake and then the 920M from NVIDIA. So this is rated to 12 volts, four amps. The power adapter takes that standard Mickey Mouse plug. So this is gonna be very easy to get a replacement in your own country's local plug, and then just of course plug that straight in, so no need for any adapters then. Okay, so the box doesn't look that strong, the packaging, but it does have that foam either side. And I can see we've got silver on the bottom so far, and it's protected up with this sleeve here, so no damage to that. All right, so before I get into the design and build quality of it, let's just check out the weight. It feels rather heavy, as expected, so 1.69 kilos. So the lid is made out of plastic. It has a little bit of a cheap feel to it. It's just painted plastic. It has this t Bayo or however you pronounce that, uh, logo on the top. Now this you can actually remove because the previous ones I looked at, the T-Book from them, uh, you can actually just get like a knife or a tool and pull that ugly looking logo, the icon, the name off there, which is great. Now on the bottom, we've got two downward firing speakers, screws there to screw in things in place, the intake vent, so if you use it on your lap, you'll block this. Now, that's made out of the silver plastic again. It feels a little bit cheap here. Now, I've got my knife there for a reason. I'm just covering up the Windows 10 Home CD key that they have there. I'm not gonna broadcast that out to the world. I actually need to use that. So on the left hand side, we've got a full size USB 3 port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and an SD card reader. So that's good to see that on here. And also a LAN port on here. Now I think this ethernet port, I don't know where it's 100 megabits or a gigabit port. I doubt it's gigabit, but I will test that out. I've just noticed that this plastic around here, that is so cheap and tacky looking. Just look at it. It's got a few little rough edges. The finish of this laptop as expected for the price isn't amazing and the, that's just out of alignment a little bit as well that usb3 port right hand side we have dc in for charging then we have a type c port this is usb3 spec only i think i don't think it accepts charging but i will test it mini hdmi out so that'll be 4k 30 hertz maximum that it supports don't think it supports the 60 hertz well definitely why because that needs to be uh, HDMI 2 spec of course, then another USB 3 port. Now you see some more imperfections here with those plastics. The plastics it's used is not an amazing quality. Okay, so first peek now at the keyboard. So no, cannot be opened one-handed. And the hinge, sorry, something's rubbing. Just opening that, oh, click noise. Okay, that's not wonderful. It's this right here, it's the plastics around, it's just come undone. I'll have to try and clip that in. So. 
gaming style keyboard of course is in red now this is not a backlit keyboard uh, flex actually that's quite firm keys feel a little bit clunky plasticky kind of feel a little bit cheap they do not feel as good as the Techlast F7's keyboard this one feels a lot yeah that feels a lot better just the sound of those keys and the feedback you get from them so the touchpad looks rather large in fact it's about the same size as the Techlast F7 touchpad here clicky mouse clicks within that touchpad and you notice this ugly looking red V symbol can't say I'm a huge fan of that but I can probably live with that so the palm rest plastics is matte again not a super high quality plastic they have used here but overall so far I'll type and use this keyboard for a little while as well before my full review that kind of feels okay the keyboard now we do have some status LEDs here and the power button is located probably where the delete key should be I'm not a big fan of that placement it just give you a close-up to the keyboard so I mean it does look good but it's missing shortcuts. I can't see controls there for the volume and screen brightness. Oh, sorry, there they are with the arrow keys. Normally they're up here, so I was looking in the wrong place. Okay, so that display is glossy, as you can see. Let's pull off the screen protector. Is it matte underneath? Oh, no, it's not. It's glossy as well. So it's supposed to be 1080p and an IPS panel, but I'll check that out in a second. Okay, so just powered it on and went straight into the BIOS. You know me, I want to check out and see if this has the advanced settings open to us. And it actually looks like it does. The one I'm after is our power limit. And that's under CPU power management right here. And yes, the power limit is in fact disabled out of the factory. So that's a good sign there. That means it can use up to about 15 watts. It's normally the maximum I see out of these chipset. But that's when it's using the integrated graphics. Now, I'm not too sure if it's going to have... NVIDIA's Optimus, so that's that graphic switching technology, use the integrated and then swap over to the dedicated when it actually needs it. So let's just get out of here now, we'll take a look at that screen, but I can see already that yes, it is an IPS panel because it's not shifting the colors there. Now viewing angles aren't amazing, I think it's to do with the, see that, how it works, reflecting a lot because it's not a matte screen. I would have preferred this to have been a matte screen. But anyway, let's just get out of this and get into desktop here and see if it's running Windows 10 in English. Okay, so it looks like it is. Now I haven't commented yet, but look at those bezels. They're actually not too bad. So we have rather slim bezels top and bottom. And the screen's not looking too bad really for a 15.6 inch display. Okay, so straight away I found a con with this touchpad. It does not seem to be supporting any gestures. So the double tap, that doesn't work. Swiping, none of those Windows 10 gestures are working. It's definitely not a precision touchpad. I just checked the drivers. So quite annoying, you'd have to right click using that clunky button there. No, don't like this at all. So, okay, it's a gaming laptop, so you'd probably be using a mouse anyway. But even so, if this had a precision touchpad, that would just be so much better. So touchpad is crap so just to check out and run through a few things here to do with the hardware first so we can see that the maximum turbo here is 2.3 gigahertz instead of the 2.2 on the n3450 the base clock is 1.5 gigahertz instead of 1.1 so this should give us a little bit of a boost there so that's not really um, gonna really be super powerful or anything like that but it should be sufficient for light tasks at least now if i have a look at the monitor just have a look at the it says it's a flat panel and it's definitely not uh, 768p. This is a 1080p panel, so it's not reading that correctly. It's saying it's an MS underscore 0003. No, that is not the case here. So the memory is not actually running at the higher supported speeds. I was just having a look at that before because we have a look here under memory in Windows and the task manager. You can see it's running at 1.3 gigahertz and it should be actually 1.1 1 .1, uh, what I typically see on the the other Celeron so the N3450 series of laptops that I commonly review those budget laptops that sell for around 230 50 US so hopefully I can change that in the BIOS I probably won't mess about with it right now in case I end up just bricking this completely so the hardware the device manager as well I just wanted to have a quick look at a couple of things so network we have right here a Broadcom well it's actually got listed twice but that's not the case here it's the Intel dual band wireless AC 3165 so very common here 
I don't know why this is being listed in here twice. If I look at the device manager, uh, it's only in here once here. So that's the one it is. So it's the Intel dual band wireless AC. That's not too bad. I mean, it's reasonably fast. It's wireless AC, of course. So a better than wireless N that we were seeing last year. And the ethernet port, that's only uh, 100 megabits per second. So not a gigabit one there. So it's not the fastest. And you can see that the drive, so we've got an NT 128 gigabyte drive that has approximately, I think it was 90 something, just bring that up for you, 90 something gigabytes free. Okay, here we go. So yeah, 97.4 free. And the speeds of the drive, you can see right here, so these aren't actually too bad. Now why we're seeing full write speeds, SATA 3 write speeds on this is because it's actually a 22 by 80, so the longer M.2 SATA 3 SSD that this has within there, which is another positive here, this is good. So if you can upgrade, you can put an even larger SSD uh, on this. This is the size I'm talking about. So my crucial 22 by 80, this one's 290 gigabytes. You could put this in there. I'll show you the internal soon where you can upgrade what is available to us to upgrade. So the wireless card and the SSD. Now the battery capacity has been reported as 40 watt hours, which I guess that's actually okay considering, now just to touch on that screen again, it's really not a bad display considering the price of this. I must say, I'm impressed with the display, it's probably the best part. So yeah, the, the build quality overall is pretty plasticky and cheapy kind of feeling. At least they put a, a decent panel on here. Now this isn't even the full brightness I have at the moment. So I'll just increase that to full brightness. Now just looking at the information of this dedicated GPU we've got on here, it supports DirectX 12, so that is good. Uh, the driver version doesn't seem, no, that's not the latest. So I have to update that. We've got dedicated memory. We've got two gigabytes of double data rate three. So not the fastest, I, mean, I think it's the 940M or the 940MX that has the double data rate 5 spec, so it's a little bit faster, but I mean for the price you can't expect much here. Uh, there are the clocks, there, so it's 900 megahertz on the graphics clock, the RAM is 1800 megahertz, and we have 192 CUDA cores. So as I showed you at the start, we've got the two speakers that are down with firing. I don't particularly like that location because if you use it on your lap, you're going to block the speakers, but I'll give you the sample of them now. Hmm, okay, they're not very loud at all. They've got a tiny hint of bass in there, mostly mids and trebles, but they are seriously lacking volume. They need to be way louder than that. Maybe that can be tweaked via software. Hopefully we can boost it up a little bit. So if you need a good webcam, I think you can forget about it with this one. So the location is like the Dell XPS's, uh, the XPS 13 that started with that, that we've got the location right down here at the bottom. So it's kind of looking up your nose and I can see already that it's like VGA, resolution, the quality is pretty rubbish there, so I wouldn't be using this webcam, I would use an external one. Now Linux Manjaro just tested out 17.1.4 build and everything is working, so wireless screen adjustment, controls, battery, everything. So this is good news, if you want to run Linux on it, it should run perfectly fine, as long as you've got a new distro that has the latest kernels. Checking out the internals now. What we're looking at is that 22 by 80 SSD. It's king spec. So you can put your own one in there if you wanted to. I've got a crucial, as I showed you before, that I could fit in here. So that'll fit. You can upgrade the SSD. You can put up to uh, two terabytes, I think it is, in this size. But just make sure it's SATA 3 spec. It will not support uh, PCIe times two or four drives, no, not at all. So this is the cooler here with the thermal transfer pipe going to the fins along here, pushing air out, so it's sucking that in from below, and hopefully that's gonna do a good job of cooling. Now we can go along and repaste this if you wanted to do that. Now the battery cell, that's 10,000 milliamp hours in total, and it's screwed in place. We've also got this metal backing you can see here. Now that, of course, is keeping that keyboard quite firm, so that's why it doesn't have a lot of flex. This is good to see. Here is a shot of the CPU cooler. Now I've heard this on most of the time, very low. So it's only around about 15, 20%. You can hardly hear, it's just the light buzz keeping things cool. But when it ramps up to 80% or 100, you definitely hear it come on. Now you see that 
of course we could repaste this one as well. They use poor quality thermal paste normally the factory. So I do recommend doing that. If you're gonna open it and get this far, you probably just repaste it with a quality paste and that would be a lot better. Now I can't see the RAM, but definitely not upgradable. It will be part of the motherboard on the other side. There are those Samsung uh, low power double data rate threes. There's two three gigabyte chips on there. Shot of the wireless card here too. So if you weren't happy with the spec of the Intel Wireless AC 3165, then just pull it out and put something better in like the 8260, 8265. And here are those tiny little speakers that aren't loud enough. And they do have a tiny, tiny little bit of bass, but they're pretty hopeless really. So as far as build quality goes for the internals, it's you know, average, it's not too bad. It's good to see that they've got things screwed in place. We have the metal backing behind the keyboard just to make it a little bit more firm so it doesn't have any flex. And overall, the wiring and things like that, everything looks fine. We've got proper plugs, nothing's, you know, just um, glued in place. So it doesn't look too bad to me, again, considering the price. I can see one of the antennas is right here. So that's for the wireless AC. So they put one in the base and I believe the other one is up in here or probably up in the lid there. All right, so have a look at benchmarks here just very quickly. So this is not any faster than the Sauron M3450. Disappointing. I expected it to be about 100 points more at least or something. It's the same speeds as the Techlast F7. Maybe it's down to the fact that the RAM's only running at that 1,333 instead of 1,600 megahertz. That could have something to do with it. So I also tested out the Geekbench 4's OpenCL GPU benchmark. So this is the integrated graphics here. It's almost 9,000. Now, okay, we know that NVIDIA 920M, I've never tested it before, is very, very low end, lacks RAM bandwidth, yada, 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 it's not powerful at all, but wait for it, bum, bum, <laughs> this is so low, I did not expect 9,429, that's just, you know, okay, that just shows how weak it is. So what I decided to do, all right, I'll boost it up, I did a slight overclock, so I added 150 to the core, 150 to the memory, with um, MSI's Afterburner, and it's gone up about 10%, now 11,000. I mean, I expected 15 or 20,000 OpenCL score from this dedicated GPU. I had no idea the NVIDIA 920M is so weak, super weak, but let's test out a game and see if we can at least get better results in gaming, because benchmarks are one thing than the integrated Intel 500 HD GPU. So here we go, the only game I'm going to test is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now I'm going to try running 720p on very low settings. This is an old game, but as we just saw before, that it's a super weak GPU. So let's see how it handles it. Okay, so not very good at all. Look at this, 720p running about 20 frames per second. Uh, yeah, that's really slow. Very slow. I mean, it's marginally better than the Intel HD 500 with the power limits removed. So let's see if I can lower that resolution down and at least get something that's got playable frame rate. Okay, so 1024 by 768, this really isn't much better at all. Look at that, 19 frames per second, a high of about 30. This is just not working at all. Why is this hardware configuration even exist? It's, yeah, it's just useless, this GPU. All right, I'm gonna just wrap up this video here. I will not be doing a full review of this hardware because after testing out some games on this so-called ultra-budget gaming laptop, you can see that it's no faster than having the integrated graphics of, for example, the Techlast F7 without a power limit on it, which is in the background there. So there is absolutely no point to this hardware configuration. I didn't actually know, I was unaware, completely unaware, that the NVIDIA 920M was so weak and absolutely hopeless that an Intel 500 integrated GPU is almost as fast. So that is it for this video here. Now, if you want to know about the fan noise, yes, it comes on and off and you do hear it at 100% volume. The keyboard is okay to type on, the screen's all right, but just go for something like the Techlast F7. I'll be having a, a full review of that one coming out shortly and don't waste your time with this one here. Thanks so much for watching this video and making it this far. Do subscribe if you like these kind of videos and I'll be covering more interesting tech, something a little bit better than this. I may possibly check out a 940MX version similar to this. It's a little smaller from Daysky. That GPU 
should be a lot more powerful than this piece of rubbish that is the NVIDIA 920M.